This is a massive five part food road trip adventure all around Northland. There is so much good food. This is part two of our, our Bay of Islands episode. And we have landed right on a farm at a cheese factory. <laughs> Cows are right there, milk sheds right there, cheese factories right there. So good. So we left Pai here this morning. Check out video one in this Bay of Islands jaunt. Yesterday we went to a winery, we ate our way around the Bay of Islands and now this is part two and we're continuing that food jaunt. So we're starting at Mahoe Cheese Factory, Cheesery. Dutch style cheeses. These guys make award winning cheeses. I'm Thomas. And I'm Sheena. And we're chasing a plate. We hope you're hungry. Let's eat. place was started in the 1980s. It's still family owned and operated and they specialize in Dutch style cheeses, so Gouda and Ida. And you can obviously, uh, there's a fridge full of cheese, there's yogurt, Greek yogurt, blue cheese. You know it's going to be good when the view out the window is the pasture that the cows are grazing for the cheese. So the, the milking shed's right beside the cheese factory. They milk the cows, push it through, pasteurize the milk as it comes out of the milking shed, straight into the factory, make the cheese, age the cheese in the aging room. Cheese in hand and I made sure to pack our chili bin today because I knew that we'd be visiting farm gate shops and we're also heading to the old pack house market, the kitty kitty market. So we'll probably be picking up some produce there. From the cheese shop, we've popped into the Kitty Kitty Pack House Market, the old Pack House Market. This is a great local market. We've picked up some fruit, some veg, some local oranges, Kitty Kitty oranges. Famous for its oranges around here. This is a great market. Food, music, you can grab a coffee, a pastry, get your fruit and veg. So the road out of Kitty Kitty has a lot of neat little places on it. This market, there's Kitty Betty's where they've got great jams and stuff. It's a real neat little stretch and it's on the way to where we're going now. There's so much range in this kitty kitty area of the Bay of Islands. So cheese factories, some markets, and now we're at a winery for a long lunch out on the balcony in the sun. Look at this beautiful setting. The Bay of Islands is wine country. We've arrived at Marsden Estate Winery. It's named after Samuel Marsden, who planted New Zealand's first grapes here in the Bay of Islands in 1819. Love a long winery lunch. Let's head in. How glorious is this? So we've got a table up there on the terrace and it overlooks this glorious view. It is just beautiful and it's the most beautiful day. The sun is out, it is warm. I know I will be happily whiling away the afternoon up there with a glass of wine in hand. We're settling in for the afternoon. We've ordered a couple of courses. We've got glasses of wine on the table. Thomas has got a Syrah and I've got their famous Black Rock Chardonnay. To start, we've got anchovies on toast. So both salted anchovies and white anchovies, and they're on garlic and parsley toast with a bit of um, a tomato and some microgreens. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's so good. I love anchovies, super salty tangy, crunchy, crusty bread. And in this view, this is the perfect thing to be eating. It feels so summery and, and bright and relaxed. How good does this food look? picture postcard. I couldn't go past the tamade, so snapper 
We're in the north. Northland snapper is famous. It's on some cauliflower puree, there's some prawns, almonds, brown butter. Thomas went for the Fjordland venison. His looks amazing as well. And fries, shoestring fries. Every time we sit on the menu, we have to go for it. And that's a piping hot, huge bowl. My snap is going to go perfectly with the Chardonnay that I'm drinking and I was having a chat to the team before and they were saying that this is the Chardonnay that put Marsden Estate on the map. Marsden Estate is owned by Cindy and Rod McIver. Rod is the winemaker and he's a master winemaker. He makes not only Marsden Estate wines but also a, a lot of wine for the vineyards in Northland. This is going to go perfectly with the snapper. <laughs> it's so good. Silky cauliflower puree. That burnt um, brown butter is so luxurious and velvety. And then the fish, it's fresh as anything. Oh, yum. Look at this venison dish. Absolute picture postcard. Now we're here just at the end of their winter menu, so that explains this dish. Lots of parsnip, the heavier protein, the, the red meat, black pudding, parsnip puree, yum. But look at this, I mean this is Northland, the winterless north. I'm sitting here in a t-shirt, incredibly comfortable. In fact, I'm hot and we're, we're still eating the winter menu. So that's the joy of, of Northland. It's balmy, it's tropical, it's lush such a special part of New Zealand because New Zealand's so long and we're right at the top we've got this stunning weather up here mm. oh that venison just melts in your mouth I knew it would as soon as I cut it I was watching it being cooked in the kitchen actually and I knew that was just gonna melt in my mouth it's like butter and this this flavour combination works so well. That black pudding gives it a, a little bit of a different texture and a oh yum. Throw a bit of serrata. Wash that down. It won't get much better. This view, sitting amongst the vines, essentially they're all around us. The vines, eating this incredible food, and it's just gorgeous. What a meal. It's delicious. We were just working off our lunch, having a walk amongst the vines, and we stumbled onto master winemaker Rod McIver. We're so happy to be here. It's a beautiful property. Oh, great. Um, and I wanted to ask you, you know, people, the average Joe probably doesn't think of Northland as wine region. What do you think makes this region special for making wines? Um, each area's got its pluses and minuses. So traditionally Northland wasn't looked at as a wine growing region because of our humidity mm. and quite high rainfall. Um, but a lot of that rain comes in the winter time so it's not going to affect the grapes. And as far as the humidity is concerned, um, we tend to plant varieties that aren't susceptible to, to rot and they've got thicker skins. Mm -hmm. One of the advantages we've got um, is that we've got a very long growing season, so we can just about get most varieties ripe. If someone came to Marsden Estate and they're only going to drink one glass of wine, <laughs> <laughs> what would they drink? What would you tell them to Oh drink? look, that's, that's a tricky one because it's like <laughs> saying, you know, uh, what, if you're going to have one meal, what would you have? <laughs> I know. So um, we're probably best known for our Chardonnay, mm. but that's, um, that's a... Um, been fermented in oak so it's a, it's a it's an oaky chardonnay so if you like oak then that's the wine for you yeah. if not i'd say if you want a more fruit driven style then something like the pinot gris rosés are the other um surprise wine i guess because yeah. they've become very popular in the last maybe seven or eight years yeah. um so rosé would probably fall along with that one glass of wine you're going to have if I was picking one of the, mo the more unusual, interesting varietals from Northland, mm. I'd go for Pinotage. Okay. So it's and what's, what would you like in that too? Um, it's a juicy, fruit-driven wine. Yeah. So it's got lovely soft fruit, um, ripe tannin, fuller than a Merlot, mm. um, but not so as intense as, say, a Cabernet. Okay. Um, 
So that would be those would be the probably the ones I'd go for. I think we've got to head back into the restaurant and <laughs> for order that one a glass. more glasses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We couldn't go past the the citrus tart to finish up. So this part of the world is very famous for its citrus kitty kitty oranges. This is a lemon tart covered in meringue. We thought the perfect way to end a long lunch sitting out here on the deck. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, yum. Silky, tangy. That's a great way to round out this lunch. I have thoroughly enjoyed this meal and what a posse to have it. What an epic day of eating and exploring it's been so far. So we've worked off our winery lunch and we've been exploring Kitty Kitty, the township. We went to the old stone store and now we've arrived at Whare Puke, which is this lush, wild, subtropical garden. And we're here for Maha, which is the restaurant here in the gardens. And this is a very special place. I've been wanting to eat here for a very long time. Look how inviting it is. Let's head in. I think this screams about the variety here in Northland. I mean, we've gone from cheese factories to wineries and now we're in a subtropical, super lush, green, colorful garden. So these, these road trip itineraries just weave you in and out of so many different landscapes and different environments. Remember, all the links down below about these road trips that we're on because they are totally worth doing. Check them out. Look where we are. This is gonna be a cool meal. Maha is owned by Chef Ming Poon <laughs> <laughs> and his wife Diane Langman. In this restaurant, they're serving modern New Zealand cuisine, Asian influences, so influences from Japan, influences from Hong Kong. And look at this kitchen. It's so neat. It's, I don't know, I, just feel, <laughs> I feel at home in here. I feel at home in here. Uh... Um, it's not so much trying to decide the home feel. Yeah. Because I've been working over 30 years in this tray. Every kitchen I work in, doesn't matter, it's open kitchen, hotel kitchen, you name it, they always look horrible. Stainless steel, white tile, looks like <laughs> you. Especially back in the day in Hong Kong, you work in, inside a, a third floor in the building. Mm -hmm. So the, the whole kitchen, it looks like a mall. Yeah. It's white tile. Yeah, it's and, Sterile, yeah. yeah, yeah. So now I have my own environment. I want an environment I feel happy and comfortable. I think that's what it is. It's, it's yeah. your essence that makes yeah. the kitchen feel really, <laughs> I don't know, it, it just feels comfortable. And Chef Ming's going to be cooking us up a feast. We've got kingfish, which is going to be cooked on the hibachi grill that comes from Ruokaka. We've got woody and mushrooms. We've got pork, tonkatsu, all sorts citrus from the garden. Oh, my mouth is watering at the thought. What a setting to be eating dinner in. There's the sounds of the birds chirping. We're surrounded by this lush green foliage and then this feast. I'm so pumped to get into this. We've got tonkatsu, which is crumbed, deep fried crumbed pork and a curry sauce. We've got fresh greens which came from the market this morning, the, mo the market that we were at this morning. This interesting paper bag chicken dish which is a dish from Ming's childhood in Hong Kong, back in Hong Kong. So the chicken loaded with lemongrass, five spice, there's preserved black bean in there swimming in a sauce, wood ear fungus, and then this ruakaka kingfish, which was just cooked on that hibachi grill over charcoal. Oh yes! This is a sharing style menu, so just load up your plate, get into it, grab what takes your fancy. Mm-hmm. That paper bag chicken. Melt in your mouth. The chicken, I could barely hold it in my chopsticks because it was just slipping off. It was so tender. And you got the fresh coriander, the fresh spring onion. Everything's 
fresh and flavoursome and I just love the Asian influence. This wood ear fungus. Mmm, great texture. A little bit crunchy. It's steeped in black vinegar. There's a bit of chilli, so a hint of spice. Oh. Mmm. Mmm. That's the kingfish that was on the grills. That charcoal smoky flavour has come right through the flesh. Oh, yum. Oh, local ingredients. And here, look at this. Subtropical garden. You're surrounded by this lush green environment. Very unique restaurant. Unique food, unique environment. Yum. Oh, what a way to wrap this one up. So this is part two. Well, there's five videos. In fact, we're doing five ma or four massive road trips all around Northland. This one in the Bay of Islands area is so big we had to split it into two parts. So this is the second part of a massive couple of days of eating. There is so much good food in this region and all across Northland. It's a special part of the world. Special food, special people making the food. It's so nice here, lots of owner operators. So you're meeting the chefs, you're meeting the owners and you're just so engaged with the food and you get to sit in places like this and have a blood orange cocktail with local cocktail or local blood oranges, which is incredible. You can't not be happy. It's so good. Check out the other videos in the series. There's more to come. Hit subscribe. Thank you for watching. I cannot wait to just devour all of this. <laughs>